everybody. This is the channel Buddy Bison, and I'm going to be playing, hopefully a full Let's Play, of Disgaea 5 Complete. Now this is going to be my first video ever, so I apologize if it's shitty. Uh, but I chose to play this game because I really care about it. Nippon Ichi Software had... presents... Ooh, okay, here's the opening, so I'll be quiet for this. Okay, it's not the opening, but when I hit start, it'll probably be the opening. So, settings. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put the combat speed up. Characters are speeding me up. Language is gonna be on English, so those of you for the Japanese dub, if you've already, uh, you already played the game because it was on PS4. Sorry, but unfortunately, that's just going to have it be. Um, as I was saying before, I really like Disgaea. It's a great franchise. Uh, Disgaea 5 was a good addition. Disgaea 5 Complete was just the same game that was on uh, the PS4, but it has all the DLC included, uh, which we will be covering. So, let's hit start. A netherworld crisis of extinction-level proportions was perpetrated by the Demon Emperor, Void Dark. The historians of later generations look back in puzzlement at this historical event, the largest netherworld war, which erupted and expanded in a flash, and ended in just one night. Some call it the war with no victor, while others call it the war with no hero. The truth of this event remains a mystery to this day. Right work. It's reckless of you to invade the territory of the lost. Uh, I'm going to be trying to keep my talking like to a low level whenever there's uh, active speaking on screen, just to keep it easy to uh, understand. So uh, I'll just put this on auto. I don't know which netherworld you're from, but we're gonna put you in your place. Serafina, at this rate, they're gonna annihilate us, dude! What did you just say? I will not abide being annihilated! One sardine for 20 hours of labor. That was our agreement. Now, put your backs into it. Your soft, squishy backs. One sardine to fight a merciless battle isn't a fair trade, dude! First of all, it's impossible for us to defeat Demon Emperor Void Dark on our own, dude! Hmm. Though it's against my upbringing to sully my own hands, this once I shall unleash my overload power, Baylor Gaze! Excuse me, you right there. What do you think you're doing? Ah, uh, eating, obviously. It's a fluffy rising dragon bowl with all white breast meat from a thousand year old dragon lord and its egg. It's delicious. God damn it. Fucking kill ya. <laughs> Alright then. I'm finished refueling. Let me get rid of these guys. Don't even get our first fight right there. You destroyed an entire squad of the Lost Army single-handedly. Because he's main character. I found my prince.
was our opening. That's what I thought was going to happen when I hit start, but it took a little bit. Episode 1, Prelude to Vengeance. Excuse me, please wait. My goodness! Please wait, Sir Kilia! Do you have any idea how much walking I had to do to catch up with you? I spent one whole hour walking non-stop through the desolate netherworld that is Blood Parch. At this rate, my legs will be as rock-hard as a foolish gorgon who was petrified by a cockatrice! Well, Madame Serafina didn't actually take a single step herself, dude! I will have silence! If you want to rest, take all the time you want. I'm leaving. How cruel, Sir Kilia. Surely you mustn't be planning to leave me here all alone. You decided on your own to follow me. You are incorrect. Sir Kilia, you decided on your own to save me from the lost. Now you must take responsibility for that decision. That's unreasonable. I'm out of here. <laughs> Why? can't even dodge a simple attack. You must be exhausted, Sir Kilia. If you keep pushing yourself like this, you will never defeat Demon Emperor Void Dark. In fact, you're liable to become Roadkill. This gate connects to a pocket netherworld set aside for my exclusive use. Now, Prinnies, please be Sir Kilia's escort. <laughs> All men are destined to dance in the palm of the hand of the overlord of gorgeous, Serafina. Okay, and now we're out of the cutscene. So we're going to basically be in this game's version of an overworld. So, uh, my pocket netherworld, Sir Kilia walk around in here by using the left stick. Perfect. Uh, yeah, you can just go around talk to people and they'll tell you certain things. Uh, you can change the camera angle and you can zoom. Uh, yes, and that's where you get healed and then item stores. And then that is how you get to each of the maps that we're going to be battling in. So, uh, this game is pretty cool because you can jump around in the netherworld and your party follows you, or one person follows you, I believe. And if they have something they need to say, it's over their head. And you can see all their stats down here. Now, if you don't know anything about Disgaea, uh, the numbers get really big. The max level is 9,999. Uh, and that's level, not for stats. You can get into like billions for an attack stat and whatnot by power leveling and using the game's many systems, along with equipment which each has its own item or has its own stats. Uh, like you can see on the right there, the attack stat of the thimble, which is a very odd item to be wearing. Uh, has an attack stat of three and a speed stat of three which will both go into the character stat. And you'll see Weapon Mastery uh, in the middle, where it just tells you, hey, these are the weapons that you probably should have your character use, because they'll grow the fastest with them. Uh, and you can have your sub-weapon, uh, which you can essentially just switch out in combat. 
Um, then you have your armor, which does the same thing uh, as like a main weapon. It affects your stats and whatnot. And on the right underneath the aptitude current new, uh, where you see all like the icons with the foot, the wing, uh, what that means is the boot, that is the movement range, so you'll be able to move five spaces. The wing is uh, how high you can jump, so you can jump a total of 20 height. The gun is your range with the current weapon you have, whatever you're hovered over, because every everything has uh, all the icons, you being able to improve each one individually to possibly affect that. Um, the open hand is how far whatever you have on affects your throwing distance. Um, I believe the arrow is your counter, and next to it is a counter chance, I believe. I'm not quite sure. Uh, at the bottom you'll see uh, many things like the switch character uh, for R and L, and you'll see the Y is the switch hand between main and sub. This is remove a control B back. But uh, you have certain characters already essentially unlocked from the get go. You have a couple printies, which are uh, this game's like scrub characters essentially, until you get them like really high level. But they're the mascot essentially, they're the reoccurring characters of every Disgaea game. Uh, they often have their own like. No, um, uh, they never have the same voice game to game. It's always a different voice, which always kind of interests me. It always leaves something like, oh, do they sound like the cranes from the last game or the one before it? And then you have your characters that you're able to make. This one's class is made, and the name is just a randomly generated one. But you, you can see the character list, and Kilia as the strongest character is a couple levels higher. But level 3 is meaningless to, like, comparatively. And you can check the statuses, so you have, like, everything all on one screen, essentially. Um, and then you have the abilities, which are sort of abilities. Just evil, because everyone's a demon. Not everyone, but most of the people are. And, uh, hers is deals more damage to male units, which is pretty good. Uh, specials, these are the skills that you get by using weapons or just going through with levels because you get some through leveling. Squads are, um, I don't think they're open right now, but certain squads will give certain boosts, like uh, some characters can share XP through kills. Uh, and then you have all the classes unlocked. And this game system is you can partner, I believe, with another class to unlock its abilities for another character, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I keep hitting R and L when I want to, just have to use. And each unit has their own set of info. So for Serafina, who is Gorgeous Overlord, which is pretty cool. Uh, Princess Overlord of Gorgeous, who thinks all men are destined to kneel before her. She sees, she sees Kilia as a servant, which he is not. And then her overload skill, which only uh, essentially, I don't want to say main characters, because uh, DLC characters also have it, but they essentially have to be an overlord in class, which you can only have as like special characters. So a character that I could make like a fighter would never get an overload. But uh, all male units within five panels will be inflicted with the charm effect for one turn, meaning that I believe they just will not attack her, or they'll attack all the friends, like all their allies, if you use Baylor Gaze, which is a reference. And then you have the monster type units, which you can see over here uh, have magic change types which essentially means they can turn into the weapon you see, um, which are usually decently strong depending on the unit's level itself, and another non-monster class can wield them, 
and use special skills that only the magic change weapon can. Um, then uh, we'll have the unit info for Achillea, a warrior who eats a lot and promised to get revenge on Demon Emperor Void Dark. He's surprisingly kind for a loner. So, uh, I didn't talk at all during the uh, intro uh, for it because I want people to be able to focus. And we have uh, oh, 99 save slots. That's beautiful. Uh, gonna be able to rotate saves. It's awesome. But I didn't talk during the cutscene because I want people to have the chance to fully enjoy it without my annoying voice going over it. Uh, let's talk to Seraphine and just get that thing off her head. And this is pretty cool because you get the music change, first of all. But uh, it just... It's little communications between characters. Like, sometimes Kilia won't even be talking. He'll just be kind of watching other characters interact. Uh, it's not animated, but you just see the uh, face cards. Uh, Sir Kilia, we don't have to worry about being a baby at lost here. Please relax and enjoy yourself. Sorry, but I don't have any time to waste. Where's the exit? Very blunt. Oh. My, what an injury. You must have been wounded during our battle against the Lost. No, I got this scar when you shot me. Because Serafina likes to get what she wants, even though, you know, the thing she wants doesn't want to deal with it. Uh, Sir Kilia risked his life to protect me from the boss because he was seduced by my beauty. Unfortunately, no, he's just a rather nice guy. And he doesn't like the Lost because he has a grudge against that entire army slash the leader of the army. Uh, yes, I know how you feel. You don't have to feel embarrassed. It's natural for men to kneel before me. Oh, oh, ho, 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 ho. And one of the unfortunate parts about localization slash dubbing that type of thing is it's so much more natural in like Japanese because it's supposed to be the oofufu laugh like the prissy rich girl where she's just like oh I'm so much better than you let me put my hand in front of my mouth and laugh down at you but going to English it doesn't translate very well but it's still if you know what you're looking for it's still a very clear indicator are you listening to me? Now they allow me to reintroduce myself since I'm going to be your master, which he is going to disagree with. I am the wealthiest in all the three worlds, the princess overlord of gorgeous Serafina. Now, uh, this entire game is all about a shit ton of uh, nether worlds, each their own planet. Uh, there are just three major ones. Uh, the previous overlord, my father, tried to arrange a marriage with convenience between me and Void Dark. I got pissed, so I ran away. I mean, pr pr pretty good. That's a, that's a pretty good reason. You're an overlord, but you ran away from home. What kind of overlord are you? True. If Void Dark was in the picture, I never would have had to dirty my feet in Blood Parch. That's why I'm out to get revenge on Void Dark. He humiliated me by doing almost absolutely nothing. This is all one-sided. Which makes her, like, such a more interesting character than if she was actually wronged. Uh, you call that getting revenge? Anyway, fine, I don't have any interest in who you are. Do whatever you want. Prissy rich girl laugh. Not so fast. You are my servant. Ah, oh, she has another thing. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take us around to uh, see everything. So, we have data, which is just... Check this out! Uh, uh, yeah, and all the people will say, like, a one-line thing. And you can even see sort of a... Uh, preview of the monster classes that I may be, uh, I may make at some point during this, uh, this LP. This guy's a Mothman. The data shop, check items that you found, various data. It tells you, like, your playtime, uh, enemies killed, uh, items had, so just lists all the items in everything, a shit ton of sub-menus, uh, and it gives you the rarity of it with common, rare, and legend. And I like how it's not like a super uh, like convoluted rarity system. It's just common, rare, and legend. It's not common, uncommon, slightly rare, super rare, like, and all that stuff. Uh, we have our musics, where I can set it. 
Um, and I can also set it to random. Uh, so, it's just, uh, I can even check other people's records. Uh, yeah, so, and every chapter, they randomly put these chests out, which will just give you an item, a free item. So I got a water pistol, which I could equip, but unfortunately she already has a water pistol. But I'm checking regardless, because, hey, maybe its stats are slightly better, but they're not. So what I'm actually going to do is equip the gun to him, because even though it's a C rank weapon mastery, might as well just have it in case I can't move close enough to a person to hit him. Because I could defend, but I often don't in this type of game. I'm just going to save again, because it's always good to save, and we didn't really do all that much. So, save over the same one. Um, I won't end this episode until I do at least one uh, battle, but I want to get through everything else. And this is the trophy shop. Um, uh, yeah, this is the trophy shop, which, because the Nintendo Switch doesn't have a trophy system, like... Microsoft and Sony with the uh, achievements and the trophies. I believe that this is just a replacement. Uh, yeah. Because uh, you can check the trophies because it was originally on PS4 and it even has all the same things with like gold and all that stuff. And I believe it is even the same ones. I'm not sure if they've added any. But you can see, like, perform 20 combos. Just, yeah, and each one has, like, a slight little, like, oh, your hatred makes you powerful. Uh, it has a, uh, just a little own thing to make it a little bit more spicy. Memories, this will just let me rewatch cutscenes. And an interesting that thing that you will notice is all the NPCs here, their levels are decently high. Like, we have a level 500 dude. So you can see the stats get into the thousands. His health is in the multi-thousands, tens of thousands, actually. Um, and then we have a level 300. Um, and this is Planaire. She's also a sort of another ascot, I believe, of just Nipponichi. Uh, but um, she is a DLC character, I believe, in nearly every Disgaea, or unlockable in some way. Uh, this is our recruiter. You so, need something? Uh, when he's prepared, we'll be able to um, make more generic characters. Um, these two will just tell you uh, the ins and outs of the game, yes. essentially. Um, what do you want? Yeah, he tells you about weapons. Uh, there's certain humanoid weapons, but then there are also monster weapons. Um, uh, and humanoids can use the range of weapons like stabs, axes, swords, guns, and whatnot. But monsters, uh, like prinnies, prinnies are monsters, which is why they can magic change. Uh, they use weapons like these with the monster head or a monster wing, as you can see on the side. But then they also have the shield, which is just armor. No, like, shield weapon you can put on. And if I remember correctly, the monster head is more attack-based for attack-based monsters, like physical, and the wing is more intelligence-based for magic-based monsters. If I'm remembering correctly, I believe I am. See, so yeah, we just got a wing. It's like Medal of Unworth. Uh, this printy seems to just generally be better, so I want to check to see. Uh, yes. As you can see on the right, uh, the new stats on the far right, it gives plus two, plus two to int and resist, which resist is essentially magic defense, whereas defense is physical defense, but it takes away attack. And these guys don't have any, um, don't have any spells or anything, so I'm not going to bother. But you can also see, uh, if I can figure out how to get to it... I can't figure out how to get to it right now, but there was the, uh, nope. okay, so B is jump. <laughs> Keep forgetting that. And there are just various maids around because this is Seraphina's domain. And down here is pretty empty, but that's because more people will come eventually. Uh, 
then over here you have some spaceships for another thing that will be unlocked relatively soon. Hospital, this is the special content, this is all the DLC. Um, yes. And here are all the things, here's all the content. And I am going to be doing a few of these. Two of them, actually. Um, and I will get to the rest after I finish the main story. And that's because I like two of the main characters. There are two characters here. Uh, hopefully, I believe that his character should still be in here. If it's not, then I'll have to figure out where it is. But the ones that I'm going to be getting are Metallia and another character called Gig. And I think... Um, let me see. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping Gig is in here. Because he was easily my favorite... Uh, DLC character in the um, in the PS4 version, but it doesn't really look like. But I might as well just get the weapon starter. Ooh, I can't. I guess. Uh, oh yeah, because I have to hit receive content. Um, yeah, I'll take the million hell, which is essentially the currency of uh, everything, and. I'll get these starter weapons. Which will... Uh, these probably aren't very good, but they're probably better than what I have on right now. So, equip, thimble, magic hand. Yeah, see, it gives me plus 14, and then plus 13 speed. Speed is your dodge rate, I believe. Um, and because I have a sword, they're both double A, or they're both A. I'll put them on. Go to her. Her A's are bow and gun. So I will. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go over here because they uh, denote it by what it is. Uh, and I will put on the customized replica and then a bow. It's also double A. Um, I don't really, I'm probably not going to be using these guys very much, so I'm not going to bother like equipping them. But uh, let's go over here to the weapon shop. I'm gonna buy weapons and armor. This is the place. Uh, they, they just do weapon and armor things from every RPG. Uh, uh, higher proficiency, faster to grow. Uh, if you get, if you level up the proficiency enough at certain levels, you'll get skill using that weapon. Uh, so there's essentially class skills and then weapon skills. And you can essentially have like a person that uses a gun, like primarily, but then you can equip them with a sword to give them a sword skill that you think might be useful. Um, so I can buy, get a rubber glove, let's attack at six. Um, and there's a nice thing where you can try on, so you can see whether or not it's better, which is pretty useful. And then uh, you have these items over here, which are equipment, and they uh, will each do their own thing. Like, as you can see, the slippers down here, they increase the uh, range of movement by one and your jump by two. So I'm actually going to buy two of these. Um, because uh, having more movement in a game like this is always very important, because sometimes the maps get to be extremely massive, uh, and you want to have, you want to be able to move around quickly, and in fact I could equip two of these, so he would have movement of six, but her movement is only four right now, so I want to get that at least up to five, just to keep it, like, around even, because uh, certain units don't really have a high movement because they're long range, but I always like having. Uh, just a long, a wide berth of movement, uh, and then this is the skill shop. Me? Um, 
There is a currency that you can only get by defeating enemies called mana, and that currency is used to buy like skills or uh, do things in the special assembly. And as I just did, one of the things I do like about this game is that you can just jump over the railings, which make it a lot easier. And the special assembly does a variety of things. It unlocks maps. It lets you buy better equipment uh, from the shop if you upgrade it. And it does various other things, like let you jump higher if you're able to pass the bill, uh, as we'll get to that when it's unlocked. But I'm going to take care of this because it says event up in the top right so you know who to go to if they're not following you because there might be a character here or like down here and that'll just be their place essentially but uh let's, let's get you out of the way because if i do a story related thing i might not be able to do this again so <clears throat> uh excuse me for reading over these i just think it like, i don't i don't want to just sit here in nice music honestly and just have it be boring uh my i just remembered circilia have you been saving uh, yeah, I'm on top of it, talking about money. Uh, that's my Circilia heart. <laughs> uh, save your progress to record your activities. I was wrong. <laughs> I thought I was talking about saving money. Uh, no, it's just talking about saving the game. Uh, however, Circilia, people tend to forget to save from time to time. Would you like to take extra care and save one more time? I don't really think I need to, but if you're going to be so persistent. Uh, and that's kind of just a spoof on, like, are you sure? Like, are you sure you saved? Like, boom, I just saved. Wait, did I save? Should I save again <laughs> in a different slot to make sure? Um, running on about 30 minutes, but I will do at least one battle. Uh, we have the captain who... <laughs> I just find it funny how there's this, like, big computer screen right here. Like, and you would think that that's the navigation. But no, it's, the, it's this wheel. And then you... Like, this isn't even moving. Like, you, you go to places using the dimension guide, which is a printy. Where would you like to go, dude? Yeah. Uh, okay, time to enter a minor cutscene. Are you cut finding scene. my pocket netherworld comfortable enough, Sir Killia? How do you like it? I don't have any time to waste in a place like this. Oh my, I can't believe what I'm hearing from someone who eats in the middle of a battle. That was... it's like... Haven't you ever heard that an army marches on its stomach? of a gourmand than you project, Sir Kilia. Well, as long as you're strong, it matters not to me. You could say that this pocket netherworld is Sir Kilia's in my love nest. Please, feel free to use anything here. Just so you know, I have no intentions of asking anyone for help. That is simply not possible. You see, Sir Kilia, you and I are connected by the red string of fate. It's more like a blood-stained leash than a red string of fate, dude! <laughs> you are mine, Sir Kilia. Please, do not resist. And what if I do? <laughs> All men are destined to become my obedient servants! Ha! Now, Kilia, follow my orders. I refuse. Huh? That's odd. Ha! Ha! Yeah. Yeah. That's super hard to uh, <laughs> kill you to be a bitch. <laughs> now you will find me irresistible. Even if you are an overlord, you cannot resist the temptation of my overload power, Baylor Gaze. What are you trying to do? <laughs> Nothing, Sir Kilia. According to the information the printies gathered, there are lost army forces in Blood Parch. Let's get going! So one of the things I do love about uh, Disgaea in general is the characters are always on point, really, in terms of, like, uh, like their design, first of all. Like, Kilia's and Serafina's designs are just great for, like, who they are. Kilia being the stoic badass just doesn't give a fuck. About anything but his own plans and Serafina being like super gaudy and just seductive uh, and just their personalities themselves uh, but let's get to a battle that way the first episode of my LP does not end with me simply talking over cutscenes and going around the my over, who might you guys be
What's wrong with you? Who goes around shooting at someone before finding out who they are? <laughs> I am truly sorry. Your social status is clearly lower than mine, and you seem like a small fry, so I took the shot. Who are you calling a small fry? We are the aristocracy of Blood Parch. We are cracking down on anyone who looks suspicious and taxing them. Taxes. Aristocracy? But you all look so shabby. And the world looks pretty shabby as well. Their lives were probably ruined by the lost, and they have since lowered themselves to being bandits. Shut up! Just listen. If you don't want to die, then hand over all the money you've got. I do not even have a single hell to give to dirty bandits like you. Aren't you guys demons too? If you really need some money, then why don't you use force and take it? In any event, dirty bandits like you don't stand a chance of defeating Sir Kilia. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're gonna have to fight too. Yup. Excuse me? I've got something I need to do. I don't have time to protect an unsophisticated princess forever. Awesome I'll teach you the burns. basics so that you can figure out the rest by yourself. Are you telling me to do manual labor? If you exactly. don't, then I'm leaving right now. <sighs> Very well. I'll fight. It seems I have no choice. However, I don't have any fighting experience whatsoever. Hence being level I'm one. I'm surprised to hear you say that, given how often you've been firing your gun this whole time. Hey! How long are you guys gonna chat? Hurry up and cough up every hell you have or you're gonna be sorry! Seems like they're ready to start. Prepare yourself. I guess I have no choice. In that case, I'll strip everything of value from those bandits. One of my favorite things is that, like right before a fight, obviously, uh, want to see the basics of battle. Um, uh, I'll do it for the sake of the LP, just so I don't have to explain it. But I am very well acquainted with this. I don't know if it's true uh, or not. But let's start with style. the basics, since you claim you've never fought before. Tutorial. Basics of battle. First, place the cursor over the base panel. Next, select the character you want to dispatch. If you select the wrong character, place the cursor over that character. It will return the unit. should I dispatch? Well, all printies look alike, right? Yeah, dude! But as, as you can tell, it's now, just basically try to give a orders to the character you dispatched. RPG. But <laughs> everyone has to come from the one base panel, Leave it to me. Which is, I'm great uh, at ordering them around. Whereas, like, a game like Fire Emblem, you say each individual uh, spot prior I've to battle. I've really got bad feelings about this, uh, dude! Sort of real time. Because uh, they First, all come from the one spot, move and to everything get closer on the to left the enemy. is... Very good. Roger. Charge the enemy, Prinny. All right. You After you move, move next to select the attack command. Essentially, you attack. Um, one thing that I think they actually changed during this, I'm not actually sure because I may not have done it on the PS4, is um, I th uh, they may have dubbed over this because. Huh? It didn't attack. Uh, as you can see, they're be... talking during is this. Is that Prinny disobeying my order? Uh, they're not talking specifically Absolutely saying, not, oh, dude. you need to hit the button. They skip that That part. step was just to register so an action. Not, like, we'll execute the register action next. Actively being aware of the console that you're playing on. Press the button to bring up the menu and select either yeah, execute like or end turn. Button. Of course, for but, now. Select execute, uh, correct? But yes, uh, you can set What's everything up, up then... Execute at the end of the I turn, see. so everyone attacks so in a row. Or you can my just go person by person, executing like 
That's set right. up one attack and execute to action. see whether or not it killed the execute. person. In case you don't Remember want to this super overkill them. But why can't you attack right away when you select attack? That's a great question. Because it takes strategy to pull off team attacks and combos. Tutorial. Well, no team attacks and blue. combos. All right. Purple, now let me teach you about colors. team attacks I'm and combos. Colorblind. Let's end this quick. But yes, when a character comes out of the base panel, Neil. they also um, they also give like a one-liner slash. I believe every time they move or just do an action. Are you it's ready? My it's my turn. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. You can use multiple yeah. people in them, and each one will have a yeah. different animation. It's pretty cool. These are team attacks really like and it. combos. <laughs> the love between Sir Kilia and I will explode into a passionate team attacking combo. You're going a little too far with the love and passion. Don't stick anything weird in between the lines. When attacking, if an ally is next to you, it may trigger a team attack. Up to four people can join a team attack. A combo is triggered when you or your allies attack an enemy consecutively. The damage increases the longer the combo is. Performing team attacks and combos requires you to register actions. I see. Taking that into consideration, team attacks and combos wouldn't be possible if you attacked right away. When using multiple allies, actions will be executed in the order they were registered. As a beginner at battles, you should try to focus on creating combos and organize your moves accordingly. And you can move characters back to base so they can't actually be damaged. By the way, what happens when you select end turn? It switches to the enemy's turn. If you carelessly end your turn, it'll bite you back hard. Very true. Uh -huh. Very true. Press. Why did you press it? <laughs> you did that on purpose, right? Right? Of course not. This is my very first time experiencing battle. So I was One simply a bit I overwhelmed. Kinda. From now if, on, if I should be more worried of you their choice the or direction in how if they your HP do is it, reduced to zero, you won't right, be able right to fight. Like you can recover at the pocket like Netherworld's hospital. Just do the difference My, in, uh, so it doesn't mean that you die? Size. Right, because we're demons. We don't die that easily. However, if all dispatch characters are defeated and you can't dispatch anymore, then it's game over. All right. So I just have to make the printies charge, right? How did you process all that information and arrive at that result? Well, anyway, if you open the menu with the button and select help, you can check what I just taught you. If there's anything you aren't sure of, then you should use that as a reference during your fight. All right, let's get to the real battle. Let's begin. Okay, so... Uh, from now on, I'm not going to be doing the tutorials, even though they are, um... Let's go! Even though they are, um... What do I want to say? Uh, how do I like that? You know, that's fine, I can get through it. Um, I was just debating whether or not I should change the cursor. One moment, cursor mode. A button upper right, yes. Yes, there it is. Okay, that's a lot better. Um, I'm gonna eat you, dude! I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and set up a four person you, team dude. attack. Yeah, so we have a chance with the 45 percent That. These guys can't do anything, but I could attack Kilia, but uh, it is not in five. Are you ready? Oh, we got a four. You okay? I believe this actually might be a new one. I don't remember seeing that. 
because it has been a while. Uh, and then characters, uh, enemies might sometimes drop chests, which will, of course, as you can imagine, have an item in it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is end turn here. Set the Take my uh, Yeah, if some characters are apparent, they have chances of counter, I believe. Uh, melee characters more so than ranged. Uh, one thing that does get to you decently quick is like every every single thing has a uh, like a voice line, so it's like uh, sometimes I'd rather you not talk, Prinny. <laughs> But, unfortunately, um, in getting behind people, uh, it just does bonus damage, because it says back attack or side attack. Um, back attack and side attack have higher chances of, uh, dam of uh, I believe, critting, and just higher accuracy in general. But as you can see, uh, Serafina is ranged, or she's using a gun. So, uh, her attack can go, uh, in any direction, I believe, five spaces, and that's due to her range with this specific gun. Um, I'm going to move this pretty behind, and attack him from the back, and I believe, and it goes in the order that you chose it, so the attack entry goes in the order, so it'll go this pretty, Kilia, Serafina, other pretty, and let's see how it goes. I got 12 health, which is nothing comparatively right now. What's up, dude? Uh, and on the right, you can see very quickly the bonus bar. And uh, the higher the big number at the top, the better the prize, as you can see uh, uh, behind the Seraphina text box. Uh, you can see the big numbers, and each one has its own reward. First time at this rate, you'll be used to this very soon. By the way, there's something on the ground. What are those things? Just spoils battle. So in their world, they don't just appear; they're on the ground, I guess. Stage bonuses uh, and uh, the tutorial stage bonuses clear the thing. Uh, yeah, and each unit's action does it. So doing team attacks, uh, breaking geo blocks, which we'll get to in the next episode, uh, will raise the bonus depending on how much you do and whatnot. There are other things to do the bonus gauge, but um, defeating enemies from combos, some to attack enemy consecutively with multiple allies, so having everyone around an enemy all attack the same enemy at the same time to kill it. Uh, so the more people you have, the like having a full roster of 10, which is the max amount you can put out at any one time in a map how you have the best chance of getting to the top bonus gauge. Uh, but you always get the zero bonus gauge, which is nice, so it's, you always get rewarded. Uh, and I believe... Uh, I believe the one-time bonus thing only happened in this game. Like, this is the first time it was introduced. I could be wrong. That's, it's just saying, hey, if you see an item, because you can't access this prior, you should try and get to it. And every time you clear a battle, you'll get a uh, bonus list, but you also get the the art on the right, which changes nearly every time, although it will start repeating, because there's only like 12 of them, I think, or 15, or even less than that, I don't know. But uh, you can see this one's a pretty heavy fan service one, with, like, boobs, and you can sort of see, like, uh, even own characterization in it where you can see the uh, pink haired mage uh, and the uh, uh, the blonde archer are like pissed at the two in the middle because they have the bigger bazongas than they do you okay uh, and the MVP was added in this one it was added in disguise 5 and I know this for a fact my own facts. <laughs> uh, but if a character places in it, they get a bonus XP. Uh, bonus XP and mana. So, uh, essentially, uh, when you're trying to like level one person, 
it might be good to have only that person out. But now I can use the recruiter. Uh, and I'll be able to make just regular base units. And I will do this next time. So, next time on Disgaea 5, Buddy Bison, ending episode. See you guys.